Sure. All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, I'm very excited to have you all here for our weekly loan desk room. Um, today, we've got uh, Joe Flannery here, and he's going to be going through some of the um, market updates that you all should be aware of. Um, and we'll leave it at that. I'll let him I'll let him take it away from here. So where's yours? Okay, good. Okay, thanks. Hey, everyone. Um, I am actually at the Radius headquarters today and uh, working in the open office area. So if I sound a little bit more subdued than usual, it's just because there are a bunch of people around me. Um, well, let's just jump in. So uh, one of the things I wanted to share was that uh, there was a change to Home Ready and Home Possible. And uh, for those who don't know, this is a program that's available for folks who earn under a certain um, uh, area median income limit. So there's uh, there's different um, advantages depending on the uh, what percentage they are. But basically, both Home Ready and Home Possible came out and said that they will provide a $2,500 credit that can go towards closing costs, down payment, et cetera, for anyone that earns 50% or less than the area median income limit. So this is a, a step in the right direction. So in past Home Ready, Home Possible was more about um, like decreased um, mortgage insurance, uh, it would offset the appraisal costs, um, let the better pricing. So like the loan level pricing adjustments that you normally see, let's say if the borrower has a 680 credit score, those get taken away. Uh, but now it's adding even additional benefits in this $2,500 that uh, goes towards um, the closing costs. So, you can read about it here in Housing Wire. Let me share my screen. So essentially a $2,500 credit that can go towards down payment and closing costs under Home Possible, which is a great program to take advantage of. Here's what many loan officers don't realize when it comes to Home Possible and Home Ready you can actually choose which income gets applied. So what I mean by this is, let's say you have a someone who is um, a, uh, they receive a bonus. So let's say their salary is 60K, but they get like a 20K bonus. So maybe that 80K income puts them above the area median li uh, limit. Well, you can just omit that from the calculation if the numbers still work on the DCI front um, and just do the 60K salary, um, and maybe that is at 50%, you know, depending on the area, and then they could be eligible for this $2,500 credit. So it does take a loan officer kind of getting creative with, um, with you know, basically looking at the income of, of the client. And so actually when this rolled out, um, it kind of sent me down a, a little bit of a, an education rabbit hole of like, I wanted to learn more and more about uh, down payment assistance. And a couple of you, even on this, in this meeting, have brought up down, tip, down payment assistance. I feel like this is really um, a, something that will, um, we will continue to need to know about as agents and loan officers. And I found this tool from Freddie Mac, and I'm, let me share the, share the tab. And I'm just learning too, so I don't want to, come across as like the expert of, of anything, but uh, essentially um, it's called DPA1. And then what Freddie Mac has tried to do is like aggregate all the down payment assistance programs. Um, and I, I think about this with you guys because so much of our job is marketing and you could go into here and you could pull up, you know, down payment assistance programs and let's say Palm Springs and, um, see what happens and now you can kind of learn more about down, down payment assistance programs um and you know which ones are state run which ones are city run so like here's you know city of two two are and here's chico ranchia housing corporation like these are programs that you know i don't necessarily know about um so let's just click on this one since it's very niche the city and it kind of gives you the you know what the program details are so it has um it's just basically a second mortgage and it's a one percent interest rate so hey that's pretty good and looks like you can use this for 
down payment and even can send you to the website and um, you can contact the BPA provider. So I've been just actually just messing around with this. And then also, you know, where my mind goes is, is always to marketing. Like, okay, how can I take this information and then create like SEO content with it? Um, how can I create social content with it? And I just wanted to share with you that, you know, I'm kind of learning uh, more and more about uh, this and I think it's a good tool to maybe familiarize yourself with. Um, so anyways, it's called BPA1 by, by Freddie Mac. All right, let's just jump into the market. So I showed you guys last time on the market update, like basically like our uh, spreadsheet that I keep track of with kind of where we're at and uh, with rates. I'm gonna share the tab. So essentially like this is the rate, uh, I'm sorry, this is the date, the rate and the APR and some market commentary. And you can see, kind of, you can really kind of get a sense where you could probably turn, you know, Joel, if you're on the call, we could turn this into like a line uh, graph so you can see kind of how rates have changed. So October, I think was maybe the highest or was it November? So here we go, October 23rd, we're at 7875. Um, so, you know, an APR across 8% and then boom, just what a, a big time drop, you know, like here's a big rally in the bond market. That was on November 3rd. Um, to, to payroll uh, reporting and you know that rally has continued and then now we're seeing actually rates kind of kind of actually go a little bit back up compared to just two weeks ago so now we're at you know, 6375 today's rates when just a week ago we're at 599 and a big part of that is because um, the non-farm payroll, as you can see here, was kind of the 2-2 was the change in rates. The non-farm payroll uh, jobs, they grew more than expected. And so that shows that the economy um, is still uh, progressing, maybe more so than what the Fed was expecting, to where they would shift to uh, cutting rates. And so now um, the March rate cut, so the Fed will meet in March, the chances of the Fed cutting rates in March are extremely low. So that's being digested in the market. Um, and now maybe in May, Fed will cut rates, Fed funds rated in May. And all this news gets digested into the bond pricing. So the best way you can keep track of interest rates is to look at the 10 year treasury yield. Um, and if you wanna know what's going on with rates, that's kind of the the, the best way to say, okay, what's going, what's happening? Because often when you get uh, news, um, it's usually one week behind. And the reason why that is is because Freddie Mac produces a report on Thursday of what the average rates are. So if someone is, but it's the, the previous week. So like, for example, I think I saw an article on like Fox uh, Business News today. It was like rates just, you know, had their, were at the lowest level they've been. Well, that's not really true because that, change on 2-2 really uh, increased rates quite a bit. So, so major news publications can usually be um, one week behind. So the, kind of what I do is in real time, if I ever want to know what's going on with uh, mortgage rates, I'll share this tab, is I'll just go into the ticker for the 10-year yield. So this is the 10-year yield. This is where this is really how, how the investors, the GSEs, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, Ginny Mae, are they're pricing theirs based off the treasury yield. So what they will pay for a loan will depend on the on the market. So today actually rates improved intraday, meaning there was a there was an update in the pricing uh, in the afternoon, um, like around I actually think it was like eleven thirty, so AM. Um, so rates that you can see the bond yields have gone down. But uh, let's look just in the, you can do a five day. You can see how there was that jump uh, right here. And this is the two, two jump that I mentioned. So the best way you wanna, if you wanna be up to date with the least amount of like effort as to what's going on with mortgage rates, uh, if you have like the stocks on your iPhone, just add TNX to, uh, to your ticker. So when you wake up in the morning, you can just check TNX and you can know, okay, the, the rates, uh, if Fonio, so red is good for rates, man, like the mortgage rates are going to go down. Um, and then if it goes to 
treasury yield is going up, then the mortgage interest rates will be going up. Too. Um, and then let me share a different tab. All right, I always like to share kind of my, you know, what wholesale interest rates are. So let's take uh, Rocket Mortgage. So this is Rocket Pro TPO. They're the wholesale provider of Rocket Mortgage. A lot of people don't realize this, but about half half of the loans that Rocket Mortgage originates are from third-party originators. It has really, really low rates for third-party originators, um, like you know, mortgage brokers or yeah, even like if they go through Schwab or banks or credit unions. Um, so um, I like to share this just so you guys can kind of have an idea. Anyone have a scenario that you want to price out? Does anybody have a client who's looking at a home and we can run the numbers on it? Joel, you want to give me a scenario if no one else has one? All right, I'll come up with a scenario. So let's say you have a client and they have excellent credit. And I don't really like to put the income here because we're not trying to underwrite the loan. We just want to see the rates. So I'll just put it really high so it doesn't really come into play. So let's, let's run the numbers. Let's do a jumbo loan. How about that? So, um, pop quiz, what what loan amount, uh, what's the max conforming loan limit in San Francisco County? Anyone know? I'll put it through on the chat if you think you know. All right, Joel said 114. Yes. So one, oh, Elizabeth, raise your hand. I think, yeah, one, 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 four, nine. So yeah, the best way to, and by the way, feel free to chime in. I don't know if it's, if it's, uh, I have to change the setting or anything. So one, one, four, nine. So anything above that is going to be jumbo. So uh, if I put one, one, five, zero, and Rocket Mortgage has their setup right. Um, this should be a jumbo. So let's say it's a one four. No, well, actually, let's see what happens. Because actually, a jumbo, I think it's a twenty. Well, let me see. I think they do have a ten percent down. But yeah, I like to play around with different scenarios because I learn um, about loan programs. And we'll just do a true wholesale rate. Just pass it with no broker comp at this point. Just to see what the rates are. And I want to see if, because that's at one point there was a 10% down Jumbo program. So let's, let's see where we're at today. Right. So with Rocket, they do have a 10% a down Jumbo program. So rates are not like particularly good if you put less than 20% down. So you're looking at, you know, highest rate 799 is closest to no points, but even that has origination charges. So seven or seven point three seven five would have one percent origination charge. Okay. Let me see how big of a difference this is compared to eighty percent LTV. So if we do this and we do this. So Jumbo loans are kind of unique, and I know we have a lot of California agents here um, on the call. And basically, the way I always kind of like position Jumbo is like, I'm like, hey, look, here's what we can do, and but you may want to check with your bank. And that has kind of served me well. So you can see it's a massive difference just by putting your know, 20% down on the Jumbo market. So rather than that 799, now it's like you're at no point that uh, 6875 putting 20% down on, on a jumbo. And this is be on a 30 year fix through Rocket wholesale. Um, and the closest actually to no points is 6.75. So, giving you kind of the inside pass to how you know, we price loans. So, like, 
you know, if I talk to a client, I might give them a couple options. I might do the 675, the 699, which would, should be pretty close to no closing costs. Some some clients like that where feel like they can take a lender credit, get a, cover the cost for the loan, and then uh, and then maybe they look to refinance, like especially at this loan amount. So probably by December of, of next year, um, this will likely be within the informing amount. So usually does that bidding rate from three to six percent. And let's just see how it would change if we put at a conforming amount. And by the way, if this is not helpful, like feel free to just maybe let me know after. I have, I have thick skin, but I always I this is kind of what I do a lot. I like to run scenarios. I talk talk to clients. I like to try to figure out what is like the, the optimal mortgage. And in that, in a way, you really learn about the all the products available, and um, you know which like are jumbos better than high balance conforming. And you can see here it's not like so. Just by getting a, that person down to conforming, now you're at a six point five at no point. So I actually just had a conversation with a client uh, over the weekend, and they were looking at something where it was going to be close to the one million one hundred forty nine thousand. One thing that I proposed was you could get a second mortgage. Uh, so you could do the 1149 uh, loan amount, get a second mortgage for 150000 and then, uh, you know, do the down payment. So like this is kind of like an 80-10-10, 80% 10, 10, uh, um, from the first mortgage, 10% from the second mortgage, 10% down. Uh, any other uh, scenarios to, to run? Yes, I have one. Okay, great. It's in Port St. Lucie, Florida. Okay. What's the zip code? It's list 34952. Okay. Um, it's for 1995. 1995. 199,500. Okay. And um, trying to get her with the home ready program. So I wanted to see like an estimate okay. what her mortgage would be. Well, at this size loan amount, maybe even a 1% down program would be an, an option. Um, let, me, let me just try. Uh, let me just see again. I'm, I'm learning too, so because I, I don't do a ton of the 1% down, but this size loan amount would potentially work. Uh, let's, let's just run the numbers and see what we get. And what I'll do is make that optional. And it, what type of property is it? Is it a single family home? Yeah, it's a single family home, and her credit score is about 620. Okay. So 620, you may, <clears throat> may want to look at FHA, but let's just run the numbers and see what we get. So we'll do start with this 1% down. Okay. 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 Or actually, I think the way this 1% down is you have to put a 3% and then you go back and ask for the credit. So let's go back and and, and what I'll do is I'll put it, even though Home Ready, Home Possible is 3% down, I'm going to just put 96.5 so that FHA appears so we can look at different option, options uh, that may be available. <laughs> All right, so we're going to look at, oh, I need to change the income for the area. We see if I'm ready. Let's do 5,000. Yep. All right, so. Okay, we're going to do that. We're going to look at this one plus 30 year fix, and then we're going to look. Boom. Okay, so we got three options we're going through. Thank you. This is a great scenario. Okay, so um, we got one plus in the middle because that's the one I think would be best. So one plus, we're looking at 6.375. And she gets a two percent. So she brings in one one percent. She gets a two percent down payment. Um, home ready, home possible. 
So you can see with Home Ready, Home Possible, um, you'd be looking at a, let's say, a 599, and she would also get a $2,500 credit if, if her area medium income limit is at 50% or lower. And you can see that the fees here um, are being estimated. Now, this does not include setting up your escrow account. Like, so you want to put aside money into the tax and insurance. But I, ideally, um, it actually, so even though this is the worst pricing compared to the FHA, the Home Ready Home Possible, the best uh, scenario, in my opinion, is actually this one because you get a 2% down credit, 2% uh, credit, and if we can make it work under one plus, actually the PMI gets waived. So it shows two, $206 in PMI, but the PMI gets waived on that 1% down program. So it's, it's really a uh, like crazy, crazy powerful. It's like 1% down, 2% grant, forgivable, plus you get no PMI. Um, and potentially we could, you know, make it make it work on this one. Very nice. Yeah, well, thanks for running that scenario. Um, and, you know, this is where it's like really good for, you know, like, honestly, I don't, whenever I talk to clients, I don't pretend like I'm the only game in town. Like I, I always just try to be transparent, like, hey, here's kind of what I can do. And you can chop around because sometimes banks even have like their own initiatives where they want to like, you know, do, uh, um, you know, lower, uh, uh, you know, low uh, down payment programs. All right. Well. Let, if, if unless there's any other scenarios, um, we can pause. Let me go to the pause here, and then if you guys have like any um, suggestions of like what would be helpful, feel free to email myself or Hila, and we're happy to incorporate this. But essentially, what I try to do is, is really bring you into kind of what what I work on, and then. Um, you know, maybe hopefully you can gain some value of it, but like learn about these low down payment programs because I really think that uh, it's the best um, social marketing, like just putting it out like on your social media or maybe if you, if you write a blog for your website, I think you'll get more traffic um, off about down payment assistance programs and low down payment programs than, than maybe other, other you know, loan, uh, loan products. All right, Eli, anything to add? Joel, anything to add? Joel has nothing to add, then um, I want to make sure that we leave any room for any final questions. If anyone wants to um, ask anything before our time is up, we do have about seven minutes left. Elizabeth had her hand raised. I don't know if she had a question. Yeah, I think maybe that was for the loan amount, Elizabeth. Uh, you were, you, Elizabeth, you actually educated us about the, that uh, program. Uh, oh, when do you think rates will go down to 5%? Um, you know, I'll, well, I'll tell you a story to answer that question. I used to work for uh, a really large lender and they scaled super fast and they did so many things incredibly well. Uh, they were run by two guys that both if you were to ask them like, hey, like, are you guys smart guys? They'd probably be, like get their like Mensa genius cert certificate out and be like, yeah, we're, we're pretty smart. Like we're Mensa cert certified. They were awful at predicting the direction of mortgage rates. Just awful. Every time they said, oh yeah, rates are going to go up. We're planning for this, this, and this. Something would happen. Rates would go down and, and like they were just totally wrong. And I'm sure, you know, they, they built a business that basically could withstand rates going different directions, but they made a lot of bets on it that I'm sure they were on the losing side of. Um, and uh, um, I remember when I started my company, I was like, I'm going to just pretend like I have no idea. I have no idea which which way interest rates would go. And turns out interest rates went to the lowest level that they had ever been you know, within like the second year in 2020. Um, and I'm glad that I ran my my business like not predicting like rates would go, you know, that rates were going to go up. But because if you told every economist in 2018, they would have told you rates were likely going to go up and the exact opposite happened. Um, so I don't know. Um, I do think that, you know, we are kind of like 
the peak, you know, we are at a cycle and um, I do think at some point interest rates will go down. I just don't know when. Um, but when I advise clients about the interest rate to choose, I often, if they're first time home buyer, they're not thinking about this. I will often like mention like, hey, you may want to choose a higher rate because you might not have this mortgage for as long as you think you will, because rates could fall in the next 36 months. And you might just refinance your mortgage. This is why I really like the temporary buy down because um, it basically you get all that money back. Uh, either you get it, either you save it up front for every you know month that you do the payments, or you know when you close, you get the money back as applied towards your unpaid principal. Whereas if you pay points, you just lose it if you refi. Uh, so I I often educate first time home buyers about this because first time home buyers get so attached to the rate and not attached to the fees because they're like worried that they're gonna like have a higher rate than their neighbor. Like they're gonna compare rates to their neighbor. Like what you got a six nine nine? Like I got a six point two five. Yeah, well, maybe that person who got that 625 paid $10,000 in fees and the one who paid 699 paid $0 in fees. Well, which one's better? I don't know, but it will depend on how long they have the mortgage. There's a break-even point. The longer you have the mortgage, the better off you are having the lower interest rate. The shorter you have the mortgage, the better off you are having the higher rate and paying no fees and then just refinancing when the opportunity presents itself. My bet is that the person who takes the higher rate will end up being in a better position. Like for me personally, I bought a condo in 2018, um, sorry, 2019. And um, I took the highest interest rate that was possible. And the lender credit was $18,800. And my fees on that were negative $10,000, meaning the lender paid me $10,000 to do the mortgage fee. So I had them pay my property taxes, my homeowner's insurance, all the things that I would have to pay if I was a cash buyer. Um, and I just refinance, you know, when the opportunity presents itself. So often mortgage professionals, they'll brag more about doing the loan at negative closing costs, whereas um, whereas like first time home buyers are so attached to the rate and that's why they end up paying so many points and fees. And, you know, all, this happens all the time. And then, then they refi three years later. I'm like, shoot, I shouldn't have paid all those all those fees. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I would have told you. Uh, Fairway um, Mortgage was not a partner of ours, Elizabeth. Uh, so she added in the comment that Fairway Mortgage exited the wholesale um, um, channel. It will be really interesting to see how UWM um, treats this because I don't know if you know this, but UWM has an ultimatum. They say if you work with Fairway or if you work with Rocket, you can't work with UWM. So now they didn't want to isolate Rocket, even though it was all about Rocket. And so it'll be interesting to see if UWM drops their ultimatum, which would be really, really positive news for brokers if we could work with both Rocket and UWM because they are the two biggest wholesale lenders um, in the country by far. Like they are 1A and 1B. So it's kind of unfair right now that we can't work with both because UWM says you can't work with both. So I wonder if, if when I, when I heard that news, that's exactly where my thought went. Like, okay, maybe UWM will drop their uh, ultimatum now. Great questions. All right. Thank you all. I appreciate your time and we'll talk soon. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a great rest of your Tuesday. Is that all you